Avengers Age of Ultron is the lowest rated Avengers movie, but is considered a satisfying sequel despite its flaws. Ultron was a decent villain with some three-dimensionality because of the excellent voice acting by James Spader, but Ultron's impact as a villain was considered underwhelming compared to the hype built up for him in the trailers. Avengers Age of Ultron is further criticized for being overstuffed, with too many characters to manage, containing a less straightforward plot than the first Avengers film, and having too many destructive special effects sequences that made the story feel lazy. Ultimately, Age of Ultron feels more like a box to be checked off, just so the Marvel Cinematic Universe could move on to better stories down the pipeline. Iron Man 2 had a lofty goal to build upon the success of its predecessor and continue to entice audiences to invest in the blossoming franchise of the MCU. And like Avengers Age of Ultron, Iron Man 2 mostly delivered on that promise. Robert Downey Jr. shines again as the charismatic yet flawed hero Tony Stark, and Mickey Rourke's Ivan Vanko is an intimidating presence in every scene but he felt underutilized and his impact was diminished by having to share the screen with the much less interesting corporate villain, Justin Hammer. The film is criticized for lacking focus by containing too many subplots that all revolve around Tony Stark's desire to keep his arc reactor out of the wrong hands, which is a story arc too similar to the original that makes this film feel redundant. Iron Man 2 is a high-octane sequel with plenty of visual flair, but the general critical response is that the film was an underwhelming follow-up to the original. The Incredible Hulk was a confusing entry in the MCU because of the brand confusion it created by being a reboot just five years after Ang Lee's divisive take on the character in 2003. In contrast to that film, The Incredible Hulk succeeded at being a more faithful adaptation of the character and included plenty of action sequences that people would come to expect of the Hulk and the MCU as a whole. But The Incredible Hulk is criticized for having a weak third act, and despite Edward Norton's acting ability, the film wasn't able to establish a strong enough sense of Bruce Banner's inner conflict. In hindsight, this film has very little to do with the overarching narrative of the MCU, since aside from General Ross, none of these characters are ever seen or heard from again. The Incredible Hulk is technically part of the MCU, but the look and feel of the movie is vastly different than all the others, making this film feel more like a black sheep than part of the fold. Thor The Dark World is labeled as one of the most forgettable films in the entire MCU, and is widely criticized for its one-dimensional villain, confusing mythology, and taking the term Dark World too literally. By this point, the MCU had become known for being mostly fun and lighthearted, and filled with witty humor which clashed heavily with the Dark World's grim and serious look. The film was successful in transitioning Loki from being an outright villain to become a wildcard, a defining characteristic he'd carry on throughout the rest of the series. But Thor's character development was virtually non-existent in this film, because by the end of the movie he's still pretty much the same he was at the start of it. Ultimately, Thor The Dark World was held back by poor storytelling, and currently has a barely passable Rotten Tomato score of 66, but it's much higher than our next entry on the list. The MCU's newest film Eternals is about an immortal alien race, the Eternals, who emerge from hiding after thousands of years to protect Earth from their evil counterparts, the Deviants. And this film is currently making headlines by becoming the lowest rated movie in the entire MCU, with a Rotten Tomato score of 50 at the time of this writing. Up to this point, the entire MCU has averaged an overall score of 85%, with 6 out of the last 10 films scoring over 90%, which makes Eternals stand out as a critical failure, despite being praised by audiences with an 86% approval rating. The mixed critical reviews of Eternals praise its visuals, performances, and ethnically diverse cast, but is mainly criticized for its inconsistent pacing and juggling too many subplots in its hefty two and a half hour runtime. With several more MCU films on the horizon, it'll be interesting to see if this film is doomed to remain at the bottom of MCU's barrel. But I suppose for now, only time will tell. Click a video to enjoy more great content right here on Fun Fact Films.